We're going to talk about getting referrals without asking. Boy, wouldn't that be nice? And it's possible. Uh, I, I remember one time I had a guy ask me, can you, uh, uh, you know, can you coach me, but I'm not going to ask for referrals. And I go, well, okay, can you still help me? And I said, yeah, I can still help you. I mean, we talked about why I didn't want to ask, but uh, for whatever reason, uh, but we were able to help them anyway. So we are recording this. Um, and so um, who is speaking? This is Bill Cates speaking. Thank you. Uh, and um, the questions are coming in fast and furious already. Sorry about that. So just type them in the box. I'll get to them uh, as much as possible. No, I will not be sharing the slides, but I will be sharing a replay. Uh, of this, in which case you can grab everything you need from that, and you can take pictures or screen captures as we go. So we're going to have four more remarks for 35, 40, 45 minutes, give or, give or take. Uh, and there's my email address. If you have a question that comes up later, uh, which you might, just feel free to, to do that. Um, and uh, so for some reason, our on animation is not working either. Uh, but let's just keep going. So. Why referrals? Well, borrowed trust, obviously. We borrow the trust in one relationship long enough to earn our own trust in the new relationship. And when we do that, when we have that borrowed trust working for us, obviously, then, you know, you can move up the financial ladder if you want. If you want to try to reach higher level clients, affluent, wealthy clients, and then there, it's the referral process that's going to allow you to do that. Uh, it's easier to set appointments, obviously, when you're working from a referral or an introduction. You're going to convert at a higher ratio. Studies have shown that clients that come in through referrals, introductions, stay with whatever kind of industry. Most everyone on this call is in insurance or financial services, but uh, across industries, there's stronger loyalty and referrals. But yeah, referrals, studies have shown that a client that comes into a financial practice through a referral is two and a half times more likely to give referrals. So uh, what happens is it takes on a life of its own. A little momentum gets created. I love this quote from uh, Mark Zuckerberg, you know, the king of uh, social media. He says, a recommendation from a trusted friend influences people more than the best broadcast message. So here, someone who's made a, you know, a lot of money on broadcast messages says, you know, look, use Facebook, but make sure you maximize what we know works, and particularly for this industry, is that referral. But not just a referral and introduction, right? So, um, you know, why introductions? Well, because you need to get connected these days. And if you don't get connected, then referrals are pretty much worthless. Uh, you know, the old referred lead, just call someone, hey, your friend George recommended I give you a call. If, you know, if this prospect hasn't been alerted to your call and why they should trust you or take your call, then, you know, it just pretty much doesn't go anywhere and it might be on a do not call list and it's just hard to reach these people. In fact, here's my hierarchy of referrals. You've heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. This is uh, Kate's hierarchy of referrals. And by the way, I see your questions coming in and I will, I will pause and get to them in just a second. Uh, so, you know, leads. All right. Well, a lot of people like leads and I'm not saying you shouldn't you know, want leads, especially if you're new in this business. But we know that uh, they're not getting cheaper. They're not getting better, generally speaking. And they're kind of a recipe for mediocrity in this business for most folks. There are very few top producers in this business that are, that are looking for any kind of leads, unless they're really high-level leads. Uh, now, word of mouth is okay, but it's kind of hard to sustain success and build success on word of mouth for, for the financial services industry. Uh, referrals, good. Uh, that's that referred lead. Use the name. Mm, maybe not so good anymore. Now we're starting to cook with recommendations where someone recommends us. You should use him. You should use her. Take her call. Take his call. At least hear what he has to say. Right? That sort of recommendation. Well, now we've got someone who's at least probably going to talk to us. Uh, and that's good. And of course, the introduction, where we're actually getting connected. And um, you know, we're really connected with these folks and now they know who we are. It's an email introduction or an in-person introduction. And that's almost the highest level. The highest level is what I'll call an advocate or advocacy. And advocacy is where you kind of get the both of the purple and the green there. You get someone who is going to connect you and, and take a stake in that connection. And they're also going to recommend you, endorse you, if you will, in loose terms. Uh, and these are the folks that we're trying to create as many as possible. Not everyone will rise all the way up to the top, but that's kind of gives you a sense of what we're trying to go for here. So uh, please remember this. Uh, 
that cold calls are God's punishment for failure to get enough referrals. So while you chuckle on that one, let me take a couple questions. Uh, there's no sound, uh, or there was no sound before I got started. Yep. Um, a happy New Year. Enjoyed my last webinar. Wonderful. Thank you. And not sharing the slides, but uh, sharing the, uh, the recording. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate the feedback. So everybody's got a referral gap. Your clients have a gap in where they are and where they want to be. You have a gap in where you are, where you want to be, particularly around referrals. Um, you know, it could be quantity. Uh, maybe you're not getting enough. Uh, quite often, it's not quantity. It's, it's quality, right? You're not getting enough of the right kind. Uh, of, of folks. I had a guy call me up once for coaching and and he was getting like 30 referrals a month and I said, you know, you're, most people dream of that level of, of quantity of referrals. And when we examined it a little bit more, we realized what he wanted was the quality of, of uh, two levels of quality, the quality of the people he were being introduced to in terms of financial capacity as well as better connections, better introductions. So we actually <laughs> reduced the quantity a little bit, but he was writing, you know, bigger cases and, and making more money. Um, why do you have the gap? You know, fear, doubt, uncertainty. Uh, and, you know, what's it costing you? Uh, it costs a lot to do everything other than referrals, right? The, the referrals and introductions is, is one of the few things you can actually do that will increase revenue and reduce marketing costs at the same time. Right. So, uh, well, we already did that one, didn't we? So let's talk about who gives referrals. And this now we're getting into what it's going to take to get referrals without asking. Uh, great study done by Julie Littlechild. She's done this over and over again um, and similar results every time. So satisfied clients, as you might expect, they're, they're pretty loyal. They stay with us. But in this particular study, uh, only 20% gave one or more referrals in the preceding 12 months. So there's actually a low correlation between client satisfaction and the getting and giving of referrals. What we need is engaged clients. I'll define that in a minute. 100% loyalty in the study and 98% of those folks gave one or more referrals over the preceding uh, 12 months. So it's, you know, who gives referrals? Engaged clients give referrals. And what is an engaged client? What do I mean by client engagement? Well, first of all, they get your value. They, they appreciate the things you're teaching them and the questions you're asking and, you know, not selling anything without the bigger picture and all that sort of good stuff. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, and they, they like you. They trust you. You don't have to be best buddies, but they get a good feeling. Uh, both of those have to be in place. Uh, for some people, one's a little tipped on the scales more than the other, but they both have to be in place. And if anyone who does business with you, you have done this, you have connected with this, but there are levels of engagement and we can increase that. And that's what we're going to talk about to the great degree here. So this is my the basic system that I teach. Uh, I've been doing it for 25 years. Um, client engagement, uh, we're going to talk a lot about that. That's where we're becoming super referable. Uh, leverage is promoting referrals and asking for referrals. Uh, since today is about not asking, we're going to cover the promoting, which can definitely generate some results for you. And future webinars, we'll be talking about asking and, and all the other things you can do. And then connection, right? How do we get connected, uh, introduced to these people? And the good news is if you get connected to folks and you, and you start to create that sense of engagement with those folks, then it continues over and over and over again, and you really do create an endless flow of high-quality clients coming your way. So uh, let me, uh, can you show the first two slides again? Uh, we'll get back to that, <laughs> sorry. Uh, somebody says the sound's cutting out 50% of the time. Can someone, uh, uh, Jennifer, let me know if that's happening for you to see if it's on their end or on my end. Hopefully uh, it's not on our end. Uh, so three places for engagement, right? Uh, I've broken this into three places, and we're going to talk a little bit about each one because this is how you get referrals without asking. Um, so somebody said the sound is God here. I guess he meant good. <laughs> All right, good audio for a lot of folks. Thank you. So uh, the, per the uh, person was having a little trouble with the audio. It could be a connection on your, on your end. I, I'm sorry for that, but the recording will be perfect. We know that. Well, we don't know anything for sure. But anyway, so I've delineated these three areas. And, um, and if, you, if you can work on each one of these, you will increase your, uh, your referability. So let's, let's dive in. 
So let's talk about your prospect experience. Now, um, you might call this your sales process, but this is the process that and the experience that you create for a prospective client, right? So where they're not a client yet, it's the courtship. It's, you know, it's, it's uh, oh, someone said, tell them to use their phone if the sound's cutting out. Good advice. Thank you so much. Um, one more question. Uh, sound on your end, but back now. Okay, very good. Thanks, guys. All right, a lot of folks participating. I appreciate that. All right, so let's look at what this is. Um, so one way you connect with your value. Remember, we're connecting with our value and then with who we are. We're always looking at both of those throughout the lifetime of the relationship. We talked about your gap. What is their gap? When it, this is something, by the way, I'm about to give you. You can do on the very first appointment. Some of you are probably doing something like this already. Uh, I think you'll like the way that I, uh, I, I hope you like the way that I presented here. It's very simple. Um, it's a gap between where they are and where they want to be, right? So first of all, you want to know what their here is. What does that look like? And, and you know as well as I do, some people are pretty clear on their here. They know what it looks. They know where their buckets of money are. They know what insurance they own. They know all of that. Uh, some people are clueless, right? And you can help them gather that up and figure that out. And that's great value right there, just getting them clear on that. Uh, you know, what is their there? What is their legacy? What do they want to leave for their family, their children, their business, their future? How do they want to retire? In what style, et cetera, et cetera, right? What is their there, their future look like? Um, and some people are clear on that. They've thought through that. Some people have no clue, and, and you can help them get more clear through the questions you ask, right? And then, of course, they have challenges coming down the pike. You know some challenges that they're going to face. Could be uh, tax uh, consequences, could be other things, uh, other types of insurance that they haven't thought about, like long-term care, etc. Uh, and, and then they know some things coming down the pike as well that you're not aware of because you don't know them that well yet. And then, of course, opportunities. You know about opportunities they can take advantage of. And uh, I had a, a lunch with my financial advisor yesterday, and he showed me a couple things that we we're going to be able to start to do as I, you know, age into these things. Uh, and then what? And they know some opportunities coming down the pike that that you're not aware of. And so this becomes a very cool way to bring value very quickly. This is something you can do over the phone. Um, I picked this up years ago from a gentleman in Houston, and he does this. He writes the answers down. He types up the answers to them, and he sends it back, and he gets a ton of referrals by doing this. And by, by building clarity on where they are, where they want to be, what does it do? It creates confidence. And isn't that what your clients want, clarity and confidence, right? So clarity and confidence creates a great uh, value. And so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to create an initial process that's referable, right? Our process is referable. Even before they make a decision to work with us and, you know, purchase a product or whatever that may look like, our process is valuable. And so that's what the closing this gap will do. Uh, I see some questions coming in. We'll get to them in a second. So um, now, you not only need to connect quickly with your value, but you also want to connect quickly with you, right? And that's where the power of your personal why comes in. So let me give you a couple of examples. I was doing a seminar not that long ago, and uh, one of the gentlemen in the room says he learned about the power of his why just, just in, in the work he did just a month into the business. So he was a finance major, didn't want to sit behind a computer and do analysis all the time, so he decided to get into the insurance and financial industry. And uh, his first client was, guess what, a family member, his dad. His dad had to, <laughs> happened to be pretty successful, pretty smart. And, but this guy discovered that uh, his dad had gotten some bad advice, some incomplete advice, that hadn't considered everything that he should be considered. So within the first month in business, he realized that even with very successful and, and, and very smart people, he brought something to the table. He brought value. And now he uses that. He talks to his clients, his prospects. First meeting. I recommend you share this why in your first meeting. Uh, let me tell you about a um, gal out in California. I was uh, on doing a webinar for NAFA California, and I was talking about the personal why. And, and she sent me an email, and she says, Bill, you know, I never used to be good at referrals. I've been in business for 12 years, but I've gotten eight unsolicited referrals in the last two days. Uh, her name's Carol Upshur, and, and so I said, Carol, can, can we hop on the phone? I'd like to learn a bit of what you're doing. And so here's what she told me. She said that she and her husband had gotten some bad advice, and 
they lost some money and times were tough for a little while, but they got their back on their feet and and then she got into this business and now she sits down with her prospects, very first meeting, and she says, you know, that's a little bit about what I do and how I do it. Let me tell you, if you don't mind, about why I do this, why I'm in this business. She tells them a little bit of that story. She's a little self-revealing and now she's getting referrals from prospects. Why? Because bringing, asking good questions and helping with the, the gap, that's mostly kind of a head-to-head -head thing, not exclusively. Um, but then this is really a heart-to-heart. -heart, this is, helps them connect with you. If, if you want people to, to give you, you know, possible influence over their money, their financial future, well, you better make sure that they, they get a sense of who you are. And this why is something that will do that. Now, people won't usually ask you what your why is. Occasionally, they'll say, How, you know, why'd you get in this business? How'd you get in this business? In most cases, you're going to have to kind of insert it into the, into the conversation and, and, and say, you know, let's shift gears for a second. Let me tell you a little bit about why I do what I do. And, and uh, you know, there are a lot of sources of your why. It could be something that happened to you personally. It could be, it, if you're new in this business, it could be a why from one of your colleagues. Now, you don't want to lie and out and out steal their why, but you can leverage their why by saying, you know, by using the collective we, you know, one of the things that, that we have discovered, right? We have a client, so it's the collective we in your firm. Uh, so you can still tap into that. Um, so let me do a couple quick questions here. Uh, is generating leads on LinkedIn a good idea? And can you use the principles you're teaching here with LinkedIn? Absolutely. Uh, there's two, you know, there's three principles we're talking about, right? There's the principles of engagement, which means being referable. So how do you become referable with LinkedIn? Well, you provide value, but here's the challenge with LinkedIn. The challenge with LinkedIn is that most people do stuff, you know, just kind of broadcast to a group. Uh, they copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Uh, and so it's not targeted and therefore it's not relevant. And it comes across as salesy, even though you're trying to just provide some educational value, it comes across as a little bit too pushy on LinkedIn. And I mean, I'm a recipient of that. I've made that mistake myself. And so in terms of the referability with LinkedIn, this is a great question, by the way. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a slow, a personalized process. So you want to use Sales Navigator and you want to be able to personalize these contacts. And there are some products coming out that will allow you to broadcast through LinkedIn, kind of semi break the rules a little bit. Um, but I don't usually advocate those because you're really trying to, to build relationships with folks. And so number one, you got to be referable. Now, what about asking for referrals uh, from LinkedIn? It's not the main thrust of this program, but I do advocate taking it off of LinkedIn. Once you've established a little bit of a relationship, once you've made connections with, with your folks with LinkedIn, uh, and then you know that they know people that you can probably be of service to, take it off LinkedIn, get on the phone, get with them in person if you can, um, and you're going to be much, much uh, happier and more successful um, with that than trying to keep it all within LinkedIn. A lot of people try to keep it contained in LinkedIn, and it starts to break down a little bit because it's a pure electronic relationship, and so and, and the referral thing can't be purely electronic. Right now, one of the things you want to do is you want to foreshadow your client service promise. What I mean by that, well, hopefully you have a client service promise, right? You have you have a a model that you follow that will that, that dictates how often and for what reason you'll be in touch. I mean, it could be as simple as a a newsletter and a and a and a yearly review. And in, with your B plus and A clients, it's probably going to be a lot more than that. But what we found, we're talking about engagement. Remember, so what we found is when you when you foreshadow what it looks like, when you foreshadow how you're going to stay in touch with these folks, you know, we'll, we'll meet once a year, twice a year, uh, you know, we, we will break, break bread around your birthday, like take my clients out for my birthday, we have these wine tastings three times a year, we do a summer picnic, whatever it is, whatever your thing is, just you lay it out there and they get that feeling of engagement even before you've actually delivered on this promise. And so don't be afraid to foreshadow what it's going to look like staying in touch with them, uh, what are their expectations, what would they like, what would they prefer, and now we're creating this sense of engagement with a prospect, right? They're not even a client yet. We're creating this sense of engagement. We're becoming referable. 
Now let's talk a little bit about the you know new clients. Uh, the, the, they they've now purchased an insurance product. You're doing a financial plan for them, whatever it looks like for you. A lot of different models, business models represented on this call. Um, what we want to make sure we have is an onboarding process. We want them to feel welcomed into our world, welcomed into our quote unquote family, walk down the proverbial metaphorical red carpet. Um, do you have an onboarding process? Now, the beautiful thing in financial services, of course, is that there's kind of a built in onboarding process because there's usually a deliverable. It could be a policy. It could be a plan. And usually you want to be with them in person, sit down and review that. And that's a deliverable. And that's part of the un onboarding process. Uh, here are a few other things that people like to do for onboarding. Uh, you're going to have to figure out what works for you, obviously. Uh, it could be a packet of information or goodies that you mail or deliver. I, I've run into so many people over the years that do different fun things. There was one guy, he's bunt cakes is his specialty. He'll, he'll bring a new client a bunt cake. He'll just drop by one time and just drop it off. And I met another guy who was a, uh, re, not retired, but a former pastry chef. And so now he makes pastries for his new clients. And uh, I send books sometimes to new clients or I'll go on to amazon.com and find out, you know, I'll find out what their school is, what school, university they went to. And then I'll get coasters or a scarf or something with a logo on it. So a little, little, little something like that could be a book related to finance, compliance approved, of course, or just their interests. I have a couple of books I love about dogs, Art of Racing in the Rain, A Wolf in the Parlor. So if I know someone's a dog lover, I might send a book. So, you know, something like that. It, it, again, it's just a, a, you don't have to do all of these things, but you just want to have a little something in place. Obviously, a handwritten note, a card. Now, if you've got team members, you have back office people, have an assistant, let them call them and say, hey, you know, we, you know, we may not meet or I hope we meet sometime and here's what I'll be doing to serve you. Or it could be a handwritten thank you card from everybody in your office. Make sure you sign the things. Don't do the, you know, the foil stamp or whatever. Uh, social media connection, obviously reach out to them with, with LinkedIn. Um, expectations agreement. Uh, I know a lot of folks who've done this over the years where they'll just say, here's what you can expect from me and here's what I expect from you. Um, and, you know, it's about the communication. It's about the straightforward communication. It's about how often they're going to meet. And mostly it's about the candid communication, which is so important for, for both sides, right? Uh, and they sign. It's not a legal agreement, but it's just acknowledging. Uh, it could be a thank you lunch, uh, right? Now, now we've done some work together. Let's go out and you know get to know each other a little more personally, because uh, we know the value of the of the business friendship is very important as as you build this relationship. It's kind of a turbocharger to to becoming super referable. Uh, or maybe you have a client social event coming up, even an educational event. Invite them to that. Uh, whatever you do, have a checklist. This, you usually need a checklist to to maintain consistency over time. You might have a, an assistant that helps you with this to make sure you're doing these things. But we're having a process that's making us more referable. In some cases, referable before we even do any business with them. Now we're starting to do some business with them. We have an onboarding. They're feeling that. Most folks in financial services don't do this. Most businesses don't do this. And so you're going to look different there. They're going to notice that. And then, of course, you've got to have that ongoing client experience, which is what I alluded to before, is that client service promise that plan, that model in place. So first thing with an ongoing client service experience, you want to make sure you segment your book, right? Uh, you know, who are your A's and who are your B's and who are your C's and who are your Y's? We all have a few Y's. You know, why am I still doing business with this person? We, the reason why we segment our book, obviously, is because we can't deliver the same level of contact and connection and service to everybody. If we try to do that, we we'd be having an unprofitable business from a time standpoint and dollar standpoint. So we want to make sure that we build a, a client service model, at least for our A's. Now, if you can do it for your B's and C's and kind of have, um, in fact, I have a matrix. I'm going to make a note to send you guys a matrix. After this is over, I'm going to send you the, the replay. I'll also send you a matrix of this, what some people like to do for their A's get this and their B's get a little subset of the A's and the C's get a subset of the B's. Uh, and so it will give you a sense of what that looks like. But now you can manage the process. And so we got to do two things, right? We want to keep bringing value and build the business friendship. Uh, somebody said great material. Thank you. I appreciate that, Ben. Uh, so in-person meetings. 
uh, you do that. I'm sure you do that. Uh, that brings value. Uh, value-oriented phone calls. My financial guy once, uh, advisor called me up, uh, Larry, who just retired, said, Bill, I want to talk to you about your homeowner's insurance. And I said, wait a second, Larry, you don't sell homeowners. He said, of course not. I'm your financial advisor. I want to make sure you're making all the right decisions. So who are you with again? State Farm? Yeah, how long have you been with them? Da, da, da. Uh, when's the last time you did a, a household review? Oh, I haven't done it in a long time. Well, you should do that. you got new furniture. And, and did you at least call them up for the discount because of the alarm you put in? I haven't done that either. Well, you're going to save a little money. Let's do that. So, you know, a value-oriented phone call. And now, it, it, does Larry get paid for that? Well, not initially. Not initially. Not financially, he doesn't. He gets paid through loyalty and referrals, right? I referred a lot of folks to him over the years. And uh, do I get value from that? Of course. I make sure I do what I know I need to be doing. And I realized that, you know, he's thinking of me even when I'm not thinking of him, that he's got a plan in place and he's following that. And, and I appreciate that. Uh, see some questions come in and we'll get to them in a second. Could be monthly newsletter, could be weekly email newsletter that nobody opens. Uh, do you know your open rate for your newsletter if you have an email newsletter? I hope you do because open rates keep going down and down and down. We're watching ours all the time. Uh, a lot of folks are actually going back to printed newsletters. Uh, the value of sending stuff in the mail, people will you know sit down and read that sometimes where they wouldn't wouldn't read the email. Gosh, anything that, that's compliance friendly that your firm sends to you, reports, white papers, videos, we just want to keep tripping value onto our clients. It could be educational events, educational webinar, like I like to do like this. It could be an in-person educational event. It's good to do all of that. Uh, and then the, what I really want to emphasize for just a second is that taking that leadership role in their financial life. I, I would like you to make part of your theme of 2017 taking a leadership role in your clients' lives. Some of you probably do that, I'm sure. It, it's helping them make the hard decisions, helping them bust through their limited thinking or, or overcome some of the bad advice they've gotten from their friends and, and other folks in their life. Um, you know, it could have to do with intergenerational wealth uh, and, and helping them with those decisions. Uh, but every... Everyone on this webinar has clients, good clients, high-level clients, smart people, successful people that are putting things off. Now, the power of foreshadowing, just why I talked about foreshadowing your client service model, you also want to foreshadow what this leadership role is going to look like in people's lives. And um, so just let them know, you know, George, one thing I've learned is that a lot of folks, smart people, successful people like yourself, often put off doing what they know they need to do for their family, their business. And, and I just, you know, want to have your permission, if I see you doing that, to just kind of point that out, that I think you're putting something off pretty important. Is that okay? And clients are going to go, sure, that's why I'm hiring you. Uh, and so that's taking the leadership role and, and foreshadowing it. And then when later they're putting something off, all you got to refer, do is refer back to that conversation. They go, oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. And so this allows you to nudge them in, in areas where they've been putting things off. So foreshadowing is very powerful there. Uh, now let me take a couple quick questions. Uh, oh, Singapore. Hey, man, how you doing? You're up late, early? Uh, <laughs> uh, what is a client service model definition? Well, a client service model definition is a plan of how you're going to stay in touch with your clients or prospects. In other words, how often are you going to meet? How often are you going to talk? Uh, what newsletters are you going to send to them? What educational events are you going to host? Uh, what social types of things are you going to do? And I'm not saying you're doing all of those things, but what does that look like? And I'll send the matrix out to everybody who's registered for this call, and you'll get a sense of what some people do, in the, at least in the financial services industry. And you get a sense of that. So it's just your plan of how you're going to stay in touch and map that out. So I'll give you an example from my world. One of the things that we've started doing, used to do it, it worked so well we stopped. Uh, naturally, so we're back doing it again, uh, is after I deliver a seminar, a session in-house for a firm, uh, we put people on a campaign of every three weeks, a follow-up article uh, related to keeping the message alive. So that's one simple thing we put in place. We automate it, and so we know that every three weeks they're getting a touch from us with some value uh, that they are now you know, uh, in this case, it's leaders in the financial field, and they're sharing it with their agents, their advisors, etc. So having a plan in place. So uh, who gives referrals? Well, the study that done by Julie Littlechild 
found that 61% uh, do it to help a friend, a colleague, 37% do it to help their advisor. So almost twice as many people give referrals to help someone else, not the advisor, but 37% is not bad. So what if we can corral both of this ener you know, these energies, right? And so bringing the value and people seeing the value and wanting to share the value with others is the main thrust. But the business friendship is pretty important. In fact, as I said earlier, that's the turbocharger uh, for referrals and introductions, right? And, and so what, when you build these business friendships, you, you take your relationships, sorry, <laughs> clicking a little too fast there. Uh, you, you build the kind of relationship, shields them against the competition. You get to know them in a lot of ways. You know, look, your confidence for your clients, right? Uh, they tell you things they don't tell other people. They tell you things you don't even want to hear sometimes. And, and in that, that trust develops. And this is when you can reveal a little bit about who you are and your dreams and your goals. With my financial advisor yesterday, uh, Aaron's my new guy taking over for Larry, uh, you know, we, we're sharing our goals for our business. We're sharing our goals for our life with each other because we we've built a business friendship. Uh, and, you know, clients for life when you do that. So client appreciation events, big believer in client appreciation events. Generally speaking, we want the events to be small because we want to create connections with clients, with prospects. We want to make sure that we create the connections. And so generally speaking, you want these things to be small. Celebration events, that's kind of a subset of client appreciation event. There's usually a guest of honor or a couple of honor. Could be a birthday. Uh, Gail in Red Bank, New Jersey, loves to do birthday lunches for her clients. She says, hey, George, you got your 50th coming up. I'd love to take you to lunch. Why don't you invite a couple of your colleagues from work and we'll have a little mini uh, birthday lunch party for you. And, and George goes, that's great. And so she does these, you know, on a regular basis, one or two a month for sure. And this is how she's built a very successful business. So she's meeting a lot of people. She's meeting them in, in, in the uh, the context of celebrating one of her clients and they see that, you know, their advisor never took them out to lunch for, for their birthday. And, and so people linger and say, hey, you know, Gail, I'd love to talk to you about our situation. And that's how she gets a lot of clients. Joe DeSena, uh, Long Island, uh, uh, New York, uh, does retirement parties for his, uh, his clients. So anniversary, uh, birthday, uh, retirement, all kinds of ways to celebrate uh, clients for life and you meet a lot of great people that are like them. And then the small wow experiences, it, the little things you think about, uh, paying attention to what people say on the phone and following up with a little note, a little link to a website. Someone's going on vacation, you find a blog related to that you know, destination or a website or a book and you send them a book, whatever. It's the little wows that really stand out. Scott Miller is a, a guy I've been in touch with for years. He follows my system and and he's always sharing me uh, emails of how he created another wow for a client and bought a bottle of wine for a client couple one night. And it was his guy's birthday and, and they showed up to the dinner and there's the bottle of wine, right? He gets a call two hours later on his cell phone. Apparently they just consumed the bottle of wine and they were saying, Scott, thank you for making this a special evening. I've had clients that are going on a cruise. I found out what cruise ship. I have a little something in their stateroom when they get there. Now, you got to make sure this is compliant, friendly gifting, whatever you, you, need, you, know, you need to follow there. It's my client, compliance talk for the day. Uh, but this is what really, these little things just go a long, long way. So uh, let me do a couple quick questions here. Enjoying this webinar. Must leave forward to the recording. Thank you very much. Uh, how can you do these events if your clients are out of state? Little tougher. Uh, no question about it. Okay, so maybe you can't do these events if they're out of state and you don't visit with them from time to time. Well, find other things you can do. It could be the little gifty things, the little wows, the little paying attention to conversations, knowing to have a hobby, having an interest, sending a book related to a hobby or an interest. Uh, I had a client who in Canada loved to fish. I sent him a book on fishing places in Canada. So you, you can't always do the events. I get that, but you can always work on the business friendship. Um, this person says, ironically, I received an unsolicited referral from a client an hour before this meeting. How do you bridge the gap of you should contact Mr. Jones and mention my name? Isn't that still a colder call? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, how do I get my client to, yeah. All right, so here's what you need to do. Um, by the way, the way this does, I can't always see the person's name, so I apologize. Uh, it's Bryson. Okay, good. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, what you want to do is you want to call your client up and you say, you know, I appreciate uh, you thinking of me. I appreciate the trust you have in me. 
uh, and mentioned me to Mr. Jones and can I share with you what what works the best or can I share with you what I find what I found seems to work the best in these sorts of situations and they'll go well okay so look if I call him mention your name I'll, I'll be honest with you, I, I, that doesn't usually work so well. He may be on a do not call list, maybe you can play that card a little bit. Uh, what I found really works better and is more comfortable for, it will be more comfortable for him, is he'd probably like to hear from you before he hears from me, maybe with just a sense of why you're recommended I give him a call. Can we talk about what that might look like a little bit? You know, He would like to hear from you before he hears from me. Right? You could say sometimes when I call folks like that, they're sometimes they're, you know, no offense to you or the relationship, but they're a little irritated by the fact that they're getting called by this person they don't know. And notice the line I said, here's what tends to work the best. And the people perk up. And so what do you want? Well, probably what would be good enough in this case would be just an email handshake, right? Where where he says, you know, Mr. Jones, meet Mr. Smith, you know, blah, 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 Jack, B. John Bryson, and and, uh, you know, I think you should talk to him. He's really opened my eyes to some great stuff. I know he'll follow up. But don't worry. He's, he's very ethical, not going to bug you, da, da, da. So you just talk about that. And that's how you educate your clients on how to give referrals. You educate your clients that word of mouth isn't enough and that you just getting a name and a phone number isn't usually enough either. So thanks for that question. It's a good one. So the value discussion. This is the check-in. Uh, this is the cornerstone of my system. This will help you um, uh, create referrals without asking. Uh, this is probably the biggest, most important thing you can do. Uh, it'll reveal problems. If there is anything not working, you'll find out. Usually it's nothing big. You know, maybe they just need to vent about something. Most time you won't have anything wrong. Uh, it brings the value to life. You're going to see that these are open-ended questions and it brings the value to life and then it, it can generate introductions, sometimes right on the spot. Harvard Business Review reported a study that said if a client doesn't rate you as completely satisfied, they're a candidate to move their business somewhere else. So how do we know if there's a gap in their satisfaction without asking them? And that's what this value discussion is, right? So we've got to bridge that gap for them. So the verbiage obviously will vary depending on the circumstances. Uh, first or second meeting, you know, we've covered a lot today. Uh, what are one or two of the most important things we've discussed so far, right? Notice this open-ended questions. It's not, did you find this meeting to be helpful? Yeah. Great. Who do you know, right? We're not trying to set anybody up or anything. Uh, a decision to work with you. you know, you've made an important decision, you know, to, to move forward with this. Uh, yeah, I'm curious, what tipped the scales for you? What made you decide uh, to move forward with this important work? Um, and so, again, open-ended, and, and now they're reinforcing their decision to work with you. Uh, you're learning about what you did, what you did well, et cetera, et cetera, and you're bringing the value to life. Uh, delivery of a policy plan, other deliverable. We've been through quite a process to get to this point, what value to believe you've received from this entire process. Now we're making this value discussion about the entire process. And a review meeting, an assessment meeting. Let's put the market and economy aside for a minute. Let's talk about something we can control which is our communication, overall working relationship. Is there anything not working that I should know about? And what is working for you? How, how do we continue to earn your business? So these open-ended questions, checking uh, all along the way. I was doing a program a couple years ago in Baton Rouge, and uh, Jerry's the sales manager. I don't have a picture, so I drew a likeness. Uh, 41 financial professionals in the room. Uh, he loved this value discussion idea. He got up. He says, guys, we got some end-of-the-year money. I need to spend it or I'm going to lose it for next year. Uh, $250 expense money. Anybody holds 12 in-person value discussions in six weeks. Uh, 16 advisors completed the assignment on time, and these 16 folks generated 132 unsolicited introductions just through the value discussion. That's how powerful this is. And so you want to make sure you do this. Now, this is the precursor to actually asking for introductions, but that's another webinar for another time. And again, this foreshadowing. So foreshadow the value discussion. Uh, let them know that the first meeting, second meeting with a new prospect. You know, George said, given the nature of the work that we're going to be doing together, I think it's important for us to always have a good candid communication, uh, ongoing communication. Would you agree? Well, yeah, I agree with that. Great. You know, so pretty much every time we get together, I'm going to check in with you, make sure everything's going well uh, with our communication and overall working relationship, of course. If anything isn't 100%, we need to know. 
And we'd also like to know, you know, what is working for you? So you let people know that. How does that sound? Sounds good. And now they know you're going to be checking in, do a, doing a value discussion on, on a regular on a regular basis. So let me expand the box so I can see the uh, pictures. If you become friendly with people on social media as fans of the same sports team, can you approach them to do business with them? Well, I would do it slowly. I, I, I would try to build some value first. Well, I always like want to lead with value and say, hey, you know, it's been great talking to you about the, you know, the team, the fantasy football league, whatever. Uh, you know, my company just came out or I just wrote this report. I, I think you might find it helpful. And so you want to um, uh, you, you want to find a way to uh, make sure that you uh, lead with a lot of value first. And, you know, the, the, the challenge with social media, of course, if it's just purely electronic, it's hard to go very far without coming across kind of salesy and pushy in social media around this. So what I would try to do is bring a little value, some, a report, a, a link to a video, whatever you can do a couple times. And then, then you got to get it off of social media. You got to, you got to get on the phone with these folks. You got to connect in a more personal way. Uh, how do I? This person says, how do I access, learn it in a slower rate so you can assimilate it? Well, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a, a, a way to do that uh, in just a second. Is there an effective way to get referrals from clients via email, especially clients who have been with you for years? I would say if you have a really strong relationship. Um, uh, then you can sometimes pull off asking through email to a very specific person. You know, George, you've mentioned your, your friend Ben a few times or your, you know, sister Laura a few times. Uh, you know, I think I, based on what you said, I can be a pretty good resource for her. Can, how do you feel about introducing me to her? Can we talk about that a little bit? So, yeah, if you have a really strong, good relationship, you've been doing business with them for years, maybe if they've given you referrals in the past, that wouldn't hurt, uh, then yeah, you can, you can do it with, um, uh, with email. It's not something I generally recommend. It's usually someone's way of hiding behind actually doing that in person, but it can be done. Um, all right, so let me see if there's another question here. Uh, moving pretty fast. Yes, Scott, it is. I'm trying to get everything in. Um, all right, um, let's see if there's other questions. Uh, one more, got that one. Uh, getting referrals for B2B, business to business, an environment where the service is being provided is for work, not personal life. Does this work? Absolutely, it's the same thing. You're still doing business with, with individuals. Um, you know, no question about it. It's, it's perfect for B2B, it's perfect for B2C, it's, it's the same. Absolutely the same. I've been doing this for 25 years. Same with B2B, B2C. It's same with, with middle class, affluent, wealthy, you know, lower end of economic. It works with everybody. And then you got to make a little adjustments here and there, obviously. Um, so leverage, right? How are we going to leverage this? Promoting referrals, asking referrals, social event marketing. The thrust of this is, is uh, promoting referrals. So we want to get the to talking about promoting referrals, and I'm going to get to that just in a second. Uh, people ask me, Bill, how can you do this for free? Well, I do it for free because I can spend about two minutes just telling you about something, and then we get back to it. So if you just indulge me for about two minutes, I just want to tell you about a, a, a little video course we have where you can assimilate this and at your own pace, and then we'll get back to uh, how can you promote referrals and get more referrals without asking. So I have a pop quiz for you as we get into this. Uh, you know, what is the absolute single most important ingredient in getting referrals and introductions from clients, friends, family centers of influence? Anybody, non-clients, clients, you name it. What's the most an ingredient? Well, being referable, right? You have to be referable. And a lot of people, you know, when I got into this business, I, I was teaching people how to ask and, and that was kind of what I was hired for the most. And, and, and then I discovered a lot of folks weren't referable. So I had to go back and I had to help people become super referrable, which is a lot of what this is about. So we actually have a new course. This is not something we sell on our website. Um, it, it's brand new. Uh, I've only talked about it at a couple other webinars. Uh, it's a video-based learning program, Referrals Without Asking. It's the things we're talking about here and a lot more. You can see where we're talking about the, the prospect experience, the new client experience, the ongoing client experience. And it's got an audio version, so you could watch the video one time, and then you can download it to your 
you know, iPhone, iPad, Samsung, whatever, that doesn't catch on fire, and then you can listen to audio as often as you want. Uh, the whole transcript is there because, you know, I give a lot of verbiage, word uh, tracks, and you can, you can do that as well. Uh, you can print that out and circle and highlight, and then a success guide for taking notes as you go through this. Uh, so it's a pretty robust program. Um, you know, it's all the types of things we're covering here and a lot more. How to distinguish yourself quickly to build trust and uh, how to get the full lifetime value of your clients. Uh, so we really cover a lot of things uh, in this. And we've got two bonuses never released before, uh, two audio sessions of me live. Uh, each one's about 55 minutes. Uh, an audio version live of Getting Referrals Without Asking, which is a great thing to listen to and even share with some colleagues if you want. And then and then I give you an audio version of asking for referrals without pushing and without begging. So you can you can start to tap into the, the asking what that sounds like. So that's included in that. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's nine, $97 for, the, for WebEx, right? So all you have to do, uh, anybody on this call through, through the insurance WebEx, just goes to BillCatesWebinarSpecial.com, BillCatesWebinarSpecial.com uh, for only $97. And have a, a full year's access to this course and um, uh, this is you know what the sign up is going to look like or the uh, you know checkout page uh, so for the next 24 hours uh, we'll have the price at 97 instead of 200 so um, from now on right referrals without asking just sit in your office uh, wouldn't that be great if that was your office anyway uh, pretty much a no-brainer. I mean, what is one client worth to you? You know, a whole lot more than you'd invest in this. So, uh, your look, your referral opportunity is huge, right? Here's what I've discovered in teaching this for for 25 years. About 20% of your clients will give referrals without asking, right? 20% uh, will never give you referrals, right? And then there's that 60%. That's the gold mine of opportunity. That's where you got to become super referable and you got to start promoting referrals, right? You got to be, start becoming proactive. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, we had a question that's been out there. What, what about clients who have not seen in a while? Clients you haven't seen in a while, you're probably going to have to re-engage with them, uh, bring a little value into their world. Uh, I would visit with them in person if that's the model. In phone on the phone if they're not local uh, bring some value teach reassess give them some value now with some folks you can probably create some engagement quickly other folks it might take a little while uh, a couple of a contacts to become referable again in their eyes so yeah sometimes you have to re-engage with some of your clients uh, now in most cases especially if you've been in this business for a while you, you want to do this certainly with your A clients because your A clients are likely to give you A prospects your B clients are likely to give you a B prospects, right? People seem to refer lateral and down on the economic ladder. So you may decide, you know, who do you want to spend this time and re-engage with? Um, so uh, that was my answer to the pop quiz. All right. Yeah, Kevin, good. All right, trust. Yeah, trust, trust is part of it, Debbie, and then no question about it. Trust is an ingredient in becoming referable, right? Absolutely. So uh, planning a lot of different ways to do this. Uh, here's a few. Uh, never too busy to see if I can be a resource for, you, for your friends, family, colleagues. Letting people know you're open for business. Never too busy to see. Now notice these words to see if I can be a resource. These are the qualifying words. These are, um, uh, you know, if you're a veteran and you've been at this for a while and you're not needy anymore, then you want to make sure you use these words. Never too busy to see if I can be a resource because this needs to be a good match, a win-win. On the other hand, if you're a little newer in the business and, you, and you're still a little hungry and you need to bring people in, you can take those words to see out, right? Never too busy to be a resource or to, you know, to, to uh, give friends, family a little advice. Take a look at their situation, right? I've been teaching this for years. It's titled one of my books, Don't Keep Me a Seeker, right? Simple little thing you can say. A lot of people remember this one. Uh, you can put it on an email uh, signature file or a PS on a note. Uh, glad to see the value in the work we're doing. Please don't keep me a secret, right? When you do the value discussion, right, what we were talking about, you do that check-in at the end of each meeting. You say, great, you know, I'm glad to see the value. You know, I'm never too busy to be a resource for other people you care about. Uh, I'm glad I got a happy client. You know, please don't keep me and this important work a secret out there. 
make all of this about bringing it back to your, your personal why, about the value that you see in the work that you do and bringing this value to other people. We're asking for help in a way, but we're asking for help to help others, right? We're coming from a place of confidence in our work. And so, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a, lot of, a lot of ways you can do this. Now, here's a great one, by the way. This is as you're getting started with your fact finder, your discovery process, um, you say something like this, you know, George, uh, you know, as we go, or Laura, as we go through this process, you know, you may find yourself thinking of others who you think should know about this opportunity. It's pretty common. I just want to let you know, if you think of someone, let me know. Uh, obviously, we'll finish this process for you, but we'll also talk, see, does it make sense for you to introduce me to her? Um, and then we'll talk about what that looks like so everybody feels comfortable. So I'm foreshadowing the fact that they probably are going to think of someone because it happens a lot. And I'm also foreshadowing the fact that it's going to be a comfortable introduction, right? They're going to feel comfortable in this. Um, uh, let me cover this one, then I'll do a couple more questions. Uh, if, if teaching folks how you will handle a referral, an introduction, what it would look like if they did think of someone. This is one of the most powerful ways to get referrals without asking, theme of this uh, webinar, uh, is by teaching people what it would look like, taking the risk away. You see, if, if you haven't talked to your clients about how you handle this sort of thing, it could very well be a, 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 they feel like a risk in their, in their uh, arena, and that's why they're not doing it. So let me give you the language, uh, and it goes a little something like this. Uh, you, you know, George, uh, a lot of my clients like to introduce the work I do to other people, and I just thought if that ever, if that opportunity ever presented itself to you, it would be good to have a sense of how I'd handle it, what it'll look like, so you feel comfortable. Um, first of all, the work we do, completely confidential. They're never going to learn about your financial situation from me, and vice versa. Even with close family members, we never cross that line. We will not cross that line. Uh, and we handle this sort of thing with great care. What I mean by that is I don't want to call anybody and, you know, and surprise them and have them think, oh, why did George give my name out to this guy? You know, nobody likes to get calls like that. So if you identify, you know, one, two, three, whatever, uh, you know, well, you and I'll talk and we'll see, you know, uh, we'll craft an approach that feels comfortable. Uh, for you, for them, for everybody. How's that sound? Oh, sounds great. Now, have we asked for referrals or introductions? Not really. We foreshadowed the fact we're going to do a comfortable introduction, but I've handled the two main obstacles for people giving referrals is, whether you ask or not, is confidentiality and, and what's it going to look like? Handling with care. Very, very powerful. I'm going to leave that one up for a second and answer a couple questions. Uh, would it be effective to run an email campaign reminding your clients of the value you've added? Oh, I, I, I think that would be okay. I, I, if you want to run that by me uh, first to just, you know, Tucker, to give it a sense of, you know, what you might be saying, I wouldn't mind looking at that. I might learn a little something too. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I guess, I guess that could be part of the mix here. I'm not sure if that's going to generate referrals without asking, uh, but I don't know. You never know until you try it. Um, uh, I, this person, uh, Lynn, says, I use uh, Don't Keep Me Secret on all my thank you notes. Thank you, Lynn. I appreciate that. It, it, it does work, doesn't it? Um, uh, will value discussion be available after the replay, that, that report? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and, uh, and, and, yeah, so will you email this offer out? Yes, I will email this offer out. Uh, thank you. Um, not, not where you can sign up right now. Absolutely. Um, all right, please uh, review as we go through this process. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to send you the script. I have a script uh, of, about how I handle referrals. That's that, that script I just gave you. Uh, and so we can keep going. Um, and so I, pretty much after this is over, I'll render this file. I'll get this out. I'll get it up on YouTube. I'll get you the, the link as quick as I can, certainly before the, my head hit the pillow today and uh, tonight and uh, I will send you that exact verbiage okay and I think that will be uh, uh, be the best way to do it and uh, Scott says that Scott I can't tell I don't like the way this gives me the uh, thing thank you you're welcome Earl all right um, how can we help business to business if we're not um, how can we help business to business if we're not able to help them 
I'm sorry, I do not understand the question, Johnny. If you want to email it to me or just kind of put it in again. Um, in, a, uh, in personal lines of insurance, our company has recently started tracking our referral business. Which of your books would you suggest uh, I start with to build referral systems? Well, I would say this. I say if you're fairly new to referrals and, and maybe even fairly new to the business, I would, I would get started with Get More Referrals Now. If you've been at the business for a while, if you're already getting a pretty good amount of referrals, you just want to fine tune, then I'd probably consider Beyond Referrals. I mean, they're both good books. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of hard to hard to tell you but both. <laughs> uh, probably Get More Referrals Now uh, covers uh, networking. It covers being more referable. It covers asking. covers targeting niche markets. And Beyond Referrals covers being uh, getting referrals, getting introduced, uh, setting appointments and uh, and some sales skills so it, it really one follows the other with, with a little bit uh, uh, of overlap um, so I'm just making sure I get all these questions uh, please review you may find yourself thinking of others uh, love that subtle uh, language yeah uh, you may it, it, it's true right we know that when when we're doing our, our fact finder I mean, how many times have you had a prospect say, you know, you should probably talk to my parents or you should probably talk to my sister, my brother, whatever, right? So we know that they're thinking that. We're just shedding a little light on that. Uh, uh, you could say, if you think of someone, when you think of someone, you could be a little bit more proactive there. Uh, let, me, let me hit another one here and leave it up and I'll ask another question. I'm glad the questions are coming in fast and furious. And Debbie, I got your email questions ahead of time. If I don't get to them uh, in this call, I, I will I'll shoot you an email. Um, all right, here's another one. I run a networking group. Is there a good way to present this concept of value to a group of people? Mm -hmm. Shoot me an email, Scott. Just shoot me an email and just remind me of this. And we'll, we'll chat through email on this. Uh, I, I'll be hemming and hawing on this webinar otherwise, so I, I don't want to do that. So it's uh, Bill Cates at referralcoach.com. Bill Cates about referralcoach.com. Uh, uh, what would you think about deciding... Uh, if A, B, or C, and, and, and Debbie, this is the question you asked earlier about prioritizing nine client reserve for us to some degree. Uh, so, all right, for your clients, uh, and every business model is going to be different. Everybody's practice is going to be different. Um, so, you know, A clients obviously are the people that have the ability to do A business with you, whatever that looks like. It's usually, uh, to some degree, qualified by money. Um, and so, you know, are they a bigger client in terms of the amount of revenue you can generate from that client? So that could be one of the criteria. Another criteria could be, are they well networked? Do they know a lot of people? Uh, and you, if you know someone who knows a lot of people, they may never do a level business with you, but they know other people who might, and they're willing to talk about you to other, talk about uh, you to other people then you might want to give them that A status and that A level of service and connection. Um, and so, you know, it's usually the amount of business you can do with them and, and the, the, the fact that they're well connected in the community. Now, some people, you know, the only put into their A category people who are willing to give them referrals. I think that can be a mistake because there are a lot of folks that we can do A business with that may not introduce us to others on a regular basis. But you never know, down the road they could and they're going to you know, introduce us to someone like ourselves. So uh, every business is a little different in terms of what, what you're looking for. Um, uh, I did not get a confirming email for this webinar. I want to make sure um, you're sending it out. Okay, uh, we get a record of all the questions. So Dave, um, I, I will take note of that. Uh, thank you. Uh, sorry for the blurred question, Johnny. Uh, I mean, how can we help them to create opportunity in business to business? I'm not sure I'm understanding, but um, it, it's are you are you in terms of giving them referrals? Uh, Johnny, shoot me an email. Let's have an email conversation on this. I apologize, but I just I want to make sure that uh, uh, we finish up the slides and and everything. And there's not a whole lot left. Uh, you know, are you dabbling? Are you committed? I think the guys have hung in through this entire webinar are certainly committed to doing this and learn as much as you can. Um, we've been asking the questions. We're already on this page. Uh, 
So let's see, I did not get, a, all right, we got that one. And Johnny, thank you. Uh, uh, do you advise treating folks who provide referrals as special? Yeah, special events, acknowledging them, the client events, or should you treat it as an expectation? No, I would never treat ref giving referrals as an expectation. I, internally, we do. In other words, our self-talk is that we expect to get referrals. We expect to do a good job. We expect people to see the value. Uh, yeah, I think that's all good. But I don't think we ever make giving referrals an expectation of the relationship. That's a mistake. The only the only folks I do that with would be non-clients, would be you know reciprocal referral relationships with centers of influence, uh, but not with clients. But acknowledging and treating them, yeah, sending a thank you something to them, a, a handwritten note, a little gift of some sort, yes, at events, acknowledging them. You know, some of you here have, you know, introduced us to others who are here. Uh, some uh, folks will like to do special events just for people who've given them referrals and or were, you know, part of the referral process in some way or another. Uh, that's a great thing to do. Uh, where everybody at the event either gave you a referral or was there because of a referral. So, yeah, we want to uh, treat, celebrate, uh, and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Uh, are my video programs considered continuing ed education? Jill, uh, you know, these are so brand new. Um, the client service stuff tends to be considered as continuing ed um, because, you um, it's about client service and client relationship. Once we get into the asking for referrals and marketing stuff, it tends not to be. I have not personally been able to get those approved yet because it's brand new on that one. Uh, I have a client uh, who wants to be an advocate, but he is unsure how to approach the conversation with his clients. He is uh, in an unrelated business, but we have a similar target market. Wonderful. This is a center of influence, a strategic alliance, a referral partner. So first of all, you got to make sure that he's clearly get your value, right? And, and that's something that continues over time to make sure that you're continually referable. Uh, he need, you need to educate him or, or her, in this case it's a he, um, how to recognize people. You know, what are they talking about? What's going on in their life? How does someone recognize a good prospect for your business? You have to teach them that. And these are the kinds of things you have to teach kind of ongoing over time. You just remind them. Uh, I put this in writing. I've had it on a written piece of paper because so, visually it goes into the brain better. Could be something you could refer to later. Um, and uh, and then, then you sit down and talk a little bit about, you know, how to introduce you and the work you do. Um, how to talk about your value proposition. I don't know what your value proposition is, so I can't give you that. But it, it, you're right. It's very much an educational process here. And we want to make sure that they know that we're, you know, the value that we bring, how to recognize people, and how to talk about us. And the next step is how to introduce us, how to connect us. We want to make sure we get connected, right? We don't want just someone out there saying, hey, you should talk to... Uh, George, you should you should talk to. Uh, sorry, I can't see your name. Uh, I hate the way this box is it shows. Um, and so uh, you know you want to get introduced, right? It, 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 whether it's an in-person introduction, in most cases, my guess is going to be an email handshake. Is probably what uh, what he's going to create for you. Um, okay, let's see if there's anything else coming. Hey guys, a lot of questions. I really appreciate this. Um, uh, Let's see if there's anything else coming through. All right, so Debbie, are you still with us? I do have a question. Uh, two more questions. So how, how do you ask for referrals from non-client referral sources? Well, we kind of touched on that. So again, we must ensure our referability, right? Uh, and, and then in the VIPS that we teach, and we'll have a webinar on this coming up through Insurance WebEx and through my own uh, uh, followers as well, uh, come prepared to suggest names and categories, right? Uh, you, you, just like you want to become prepared with your regular clients, you want to come, pre come prepared uh, here. So if you know people in their world, come prepared. You know they sit on the board of directors of a company or a trade association or a philanthropic organization. Look at their LinkedIn profile. All the different same ways you come prepared with a client, you come prepared with non-clients. Uh, and like I just uh, suggested, you got to teach them who you serve the best and how to recognize candidates for your business. The other question is how to prioritize non-client referral sources. Um, you know, how do you prioritize non-client referral sources? Kind of the ABC, but for non-clients. Well, 
do they congregate with your ideal clients, right? In other words, do they, by the virtue of the work they do, uh, be it community service or, or work work, you know, do they associate and or congregate with people that you want to meet, number one? Uh, are obviously you got to know, are they open to introducing people to you, right? Uh, assuming you're referable, are they open to it? And so you got to keep building your referability with them. As I mentioned, you got to teach them, remind them who you serve the best. Uh, so your A's are going to be these people who hang out, meet people that you want to meet. They're open to making these introductions. Those are the relationships you nurture. Uh, and then you want to know, do they expect a reciprocal referral relationship? In some cases, they do. In some cases, they don't. A lot of folks out there just like to have good resources in their back pocket to, to send, you know, to their friends and colleagues. And so you don't always have to, it doesn't always have to be a reciprocal referral relationship. So don't assume that. Now, if they want it to be a reciprocal referral, then you've got to know, you know, do you meet the kind of people that they want to meet? And do you meet the same, roughly the same quantity that they meet? And that's why you can kind of determine, you know, what it's going to look like. With all these kinds of relationships, you always want to talk about expectations in terms of reciprocal referrals and how they're going to introduce you and all that. Um, all right. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, we already got that one. And I think I got all the questions, guys. If, if I missed one, you know, Bill Cates at referralcoach.com, right there here on the screen, Bill Cates at referralcoach.com. I promise I will shoot this out to everybody, the recording. Uh, you know, definitely you want to check, uh, check our, uh, our new tool out. It's uh, three great courses or great uh, modules. It won't take you a long time to go through, and then you can download the audio and listen to it as often as you want until you get sick of me. You can print out the transcripts, so you can circle the word tracks that I provide, uh, and I think you'll find it to be a great, a great learning experience. And for the next 24 hours, uh, it's there, plus you get the audio. Um, oh, we do have another question, so if you want to hang in there, guys, I will ask you this. Uh, uh, Bill, if I'm speaking with someone, how do I know if they are a good prospect uh, for me? Well, I appreciate that. Um, oh, or do you want to just know that language? I'm not sure I know what you're asking. Um, if I'm speaking with someone, how do I know if they're a good prospect for you? Philip, uh, is that Phil? No, that's not Philip. Uh, you know, um, yeah, it is Philip. I'm not sure I understand the question. I apologize. I think you got more to it. Oh, yeah, okay. Philip, it got jumbled up here. Just shoot it to me in an email, bud, and we will. I will answer it with an email. I promise. Sorry about that. Um, that's okay. All right, guys, I got to go because uh, uh, everybody's hung on there longer than you probably expected. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, we're doing three more with Insurance WebEx this year. Uh, have other offers like this too, and then if you get, get into my world, we'll do some other things. Uh, uh, as well. And I uh, hope you found this helpful. At any point in time, shoot me an email, at referralcoach.com. I'm happy to help any way I can. You'll find I'm pretty darn accessible. And, and I'll send you out that matrix I promised. I'll send you out some of the language we talked about. And, you know, gosh, I hope you have just a great year. And I hope we'll stay in touch and find some more ways to provide value to you. Thanks, guys. Take care.